Westbrook Health Services has been supporting the surrounding community since 1949 and is known as an agency that is community-focused, people-driven. As one of West Virginia's 13 comprehensive behavioral health centers, Westbrook provides services to eight counties throughout the Mountaineer State and became one of the first comprehensive community behavioral health clinics in West Virginia in 2020. This podcast wouldn't be possible without the generous help of the Sisters Health Foundation. This year marks 25 years since the foundation awarded its first grant, and we couldn't be more grateful for their support. Welcome to Studio 2121. Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Studio 2121 podcast. Um, I am your host today, Kevin Trippett, the CEO of Westbrook Health Services, and with me is the Executive Director of the ARC, Liz Ford. Um, Liz, a former employee of Westbrook, um, she was my Marketing Director before taking on um, the Executive Director at the ARC. And Liz, it's good to see you today. Good to see you. Glad to be here. This is so cool, and I wish I would have thought of all this stuff when I was there. <laughs> yeah, this was um, a brainchild of mine. Um, I started listening to podcasts while I was running, and I thought, you know, it'd be great to get one started with Westbrook and for the community and mental health. Well, I really enjoy yours, and you guys do a great job, and it's fun to hear people that I used to work with, too. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So... <laughs> Um, so how are things been going since you've moved on to the ARC? So we like to keep ourselves busy at the ARC of the Mid-Ohio Valley. We do a lot of things there, as you probably know. Mm-hmm. We're the ARC of the Mid-Ohio Valley, and we have a lot of great programs in this area, but we're also the ARC of West Virginia, and through that we run People First of West Virginia, mm-hmm. which is a statewide grant and a wonderful thing that we absolutely love being a part of. And we also have West Virginia Birth to Three um, Region 2 mm-hmm. and serve 10 counties for our young kiddos in in that area Um, and then do some local programming as well so we keep busy we're uh, always looking at new ways to be responsive and of course the same for Westbrook we've had to um, look at things differently to meet the needs of people during COVID and as we recognize that it didn't just go away right. how we can keep people safe and keep our programming going and also you know we recognize the uh, co-occurring mental health challenges that often people with disabilities face and we want to do our best to have appropriate interaction as much as possible to get people out of the house and around people. Right. Now, there are other ARCs in the state of West Virginia, correct? Yes, there are four ARCs. Okay. There's, um, the newest one is the ARC of the Eastern Panhandle, which was started just a couple of years ago. There's the um, ARC of Harrison County and the Clarksburg area, and then there's the ARC of the Three Rivers in the Charleston area. Okay. And so how does the work for the, what you do for Mid-Ohio Valley versus the work you do for the state differ? So we're an advocacy only group, which means that's our primary responsibility and we run the grant for People First of West Virginia through funding funding from the West Virginia Developmental Disabilities Council and that's our primary focus every day. Our goal is to get people fully included in the community to support them in that in the best way possible through education, advocacy, and different areas of support. So we want people to to reach their full potential, um, to be employed in the community if that's something that they want, to have the housing that they want, to pursue post-secondary education if that's something that they desire, as opposed to um, groups like Westbrook that provide the wonderful needed housing and day programming and things like that. So that's where we differ. And right now the arc of the Eastern Panhandle is advocacy only. They started working with young people and the arc of Harrison County and the arc of Three Rivers provide direct care support. Okay, Okay. great. Uh, So you guys support a summer day program? Yes, so every year um, we do what's called an inclusive summer day program where um, same as the things I talked previously our goal is to connect young people with the community so we of course want young people to be able to follow their hopes and dreams like the rest of us do for the most part Um, and so we encourage community connections and we do a lot of field trips in the community um, 
we like to go to Williamstown Bank because in Lubeck because it's completely accessible. Learning banking and finances is important mm -hmm. for people, and we want um, young people to know that there is a place that they can go and have access to everything. That's not the only place, but it's just a good example of accessibility. Um, you know, we go to museums and parks and. Um, we have speakers come in about cooking and lots of different things. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's playtime and fun time, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the inter interesting thing for me. Um, often, individuals with disabilities um, need assistance to be able to get out in the community. Um, and if that assistance isn't available, they don't get to experience things that others that don't need that assistance to. And that's why it's so great to have groups to, around to connect individuals for help and to get that assistance. Um, they do meaningful work, just like anyone else. Um, and sometimes they can do it on their own, and sometimes they need a job coach to help them, but the work still gets done. And it's a very valuable tool for many employers. I'm willing to um, accept those um, as employees. Exactly, <laughs> and you know, there are lots of studies, and I know Judy White knows this as well, that show that people with disabilities are more loyal, they miss less work, there are so many pros in hiring people with disabilities, and then as a community, it just makes economic sense, you know, right. would you rather have a taxpayer? <laughs> And then for people with disabilities, it's just like us, you know, I'm proud of what I do every day. I know you are. You right. impact lives. You make a difference. And we want other people to, to feel that same way, too. Absolutely. And that's why we focus on that in um, our youth programming, not just Inclusive Day. We, our goal is to connect people with the community as much as possible before they graduate high school because sometimes there's that tendency after graduation to kind of be stuck at home and not have as many opportunities. Right, absolutely. So one of the programs you mentioned that you guys facilitate is the Birth to Three program. Um, it was a program that Westbrook used to be involved with, but it was 25 years ago um, or somewhere around there, but we no longer are part of that, but you guys do that now. And, it helps um, those individuals under the age of three get connected to services to help them with their growth. And so do you want to talk a little bit about what you do there? Yes, so um, I do very little, and I'll tell you why, because we have uh, Michelle Curtis, who's the coordinator for that pro program and has mm -hmm. been for some time, and Michelle is wonderful. So it's a free program for um, children from birth to three, as mm -hmm. the name implies where they can receive services if they are at risk or experiencing a developmental delay. We at our office have the service coordinators who connect parents and kiddos with uh, speech therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, nursing, also make uh, recommendations and referral to other community uh, organizations you know maybe a family is um, has some financial challenges you know they can mm -hmm. point them in the right direction for that but the idea is to get kids as much as possible caught up to their typical peers and then you know especially entering into school you want kids to go in um, and be as successful as possible so that's the goal of that program. They do a great job. Like I said, they serve eight counties, and they're most of the counties that Westbrook serves as well. Um, and one thing that people don't realize is that it is free. They're actually, um, Michelle's starting a, a great campaign to build awareness, and there'll be some billboards and some radio spots. Uh, reminding people that it's there, but you can't beat free, and it's right. wonderful for the youngest people of our society to have that support. And new families, mm -hmm. you know, we have a lending library. It's scary when you have a baby, you know, you have two kids, right. and, um, you know, when they are perhaps diagnosed with something or you recognize that they're not progressing like typical peers, it's a little frightening. And so, mm -hmm. in addition to the programs, we try to provide literature and reading material as well for parents. Yeah, and you know, like you said, I have two kids and you have children or child. Um, you have your parents to, to help you. I mean, this is a new experience. You, things happen, you don't know what to do, your parents have been through it. You can use them as a resource. Well, when you have birth of an individual with a disability, sometimes that resource isn't there. And so that's where you guys come in. You provide that resource and help and assistance. Exactly. They do mm -hmm. a great job. I remember, uh, actually, it was just 
yesterday or the day before, I was talking to a board member who has a new baby, and I was telling when I brought my daughter home, and she mm -hmm. was maybe five days old, and I cut her fingernail, and I accidentally made her bleed, and, and how upset I was. Can you imagine, you know, mm -hmm. something more serious, or you know something's going on, but you don't know what it is. So right. it is wonderful <clears throat> to have that support system, and we're fortunate in this area that we have some great physicians and pediatricians and um, therapists that are able to mm -hmm. come in and meet that need as well. There's a, it's a great community here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other neat thing is often the services are provided in the home. Correct. And so they don't have to go somewhere to receive the services. Right. So <clears throat> it's up to the parents, um, families, and caregivers to decide where they want to have those services provided. So. Mm -hmm. Um, our therapists will travel all over. We actually had a therapist this week who borrowed our work van because she was going out in the country and she was afraid her little car might, might be a little too bumpy for it. So, <laughs> yeah. yes, our, our, everyone's really glad to meet people where they need to be met. Yeah, which is really helpful. Yes. Absolutely. And so, currently you guys have, you have a building there um, near PHS. Yes. Um, you accept donations, you have a thrift store. Yep. Um, and what are some of the type of donations that you guys are able to resell in your thrift store? So typically, for the most part, it is housewares and then mostly clothing. That's mm -hmm. the biggest bulk of what we do is clothing. Um, we do take some small furniture, but we're, we don't have a lot of room, and we have the wonderful Restore already in this area, so mm -hmm. we refer people to them right. for lar larger furniture items, but a lot of clothes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I know I... I donate clothes there. It's very convenient and I'm not going to do anything with them. So. Right. Well, we appreciate it. Happy to help. So. Yeah. And then the other thing that people may or may not know about our thrift stores is that every day people in the recovery community, people through DHHR, people through churches, people who have lost everything due to fires are referred to our thrift stores and we uh, provide items that way. We're grateful for the support we get in the community and we mm -hmm. try to give back in that way also. That's great. Mm -hmm. and of course, um, with any ownership of a building, there's always challenges. So I know you guys are in the middle of a capital campaign to try to get an elevator in the building and get it painted. and. You want to tell us a little bit about how that's going? Yes, so we're really fortunate that the PM company um, gave us that building, and the bones are really strong in the building. We're fortunate to have it, but like you said, we all need a little upkeep every now and then, mm -hmm. and our building is no exception. So um, we did determine that because the second floor does not have uh, an elevator that we want to be fully accessible. So um, we did some studies and, you know, looked at... Uh, fixing the facade of the building, some of the bricks need to be repaired and um, some other items there and then it needs to be painted and then our parking lot's getting a little bumpy which makes it difficult for people with some mobility issues. So um, total package is going to be around $350,000. We're at about $300,000 of our goal now. Um, we are in a couple weeks, knock on wood, hopefully they'll be redoing the parking lot. Mm -hmm. We've already um, raised enough that we could order the parts for the elevator, so we're working with Pickering and Associates to get that, or Pickering Associates yep. to get that uh, done. So we're just plunging ahead and with our goal to get everything done, hopefully within a year. That's awesome. It is, it is. Yeah, making some great progress there. And then um, we had started some new programming prior to COVID, and then, of course, that impacted everything. But we're hopeful that uh, once our building is done, it'll be used every night of the week for a different purpose, whether it's cooking, healthy eating, jewelry making, uh, arts, um, education, health, mm -hmm. uh, uh, living skills, like uh, doing laundry. We have a a washer and a dryer donated by with money from the Sisters Health Foundation. So, you know, it's a great building. It's at a good location on the bus line. So we want to make sure it is used as much as possible. Yeah. We're fortunate too with our location mm -hmm. that um, kids from the high school can come and go to our thrift store or our cafe for vocational mm -hmm. um, training and to learn more about employment skills and then um, right now we have people from SW Resources that bring in people for uh, vocational training as oh, well. Great. So, mm -hmm. so you get a lot of involvement with that. Right, yes. And how is the traffic with the cafe? It's a little bit slow right now but um, generally it's doing really well. It's um, 
we were hopeful that our location right there by the high school mm -hmm. would be beneficial and so there are regulars from the businesses surrounding us that order all the time and then more and more different people are coming in and learning about what we're doing. Um, I, unfortunately I'm not a coffee drinker but I hear the coffee is great. They have a mm -hmm. lot of specialty coffees. I did have a strawberry banana smoothie yesterday and, and unfortunately it was really really good so I'm gonna have to watch <laughs> <laughs> having those two off. Yeah, so now you're going to get more. <laughs> um, but we're we're pretty lucky that the businesses around us are really supportive and uh, that we have some a lot of repeat customers and that sort of thing and then we know um, once vacations over and school starts back which is really next week it'll pick up again because it was definitely busier it just got a little slow in the past couple yeah. weeks because of vacation but yeah it's doing well thank you yeah. <laughs> so do you guys um, you do sandwiches and mostly lunch and breakfast and so yes we have breakfast sandwiches mm -hmm. and then bagels and you know bacon a variety of things mm -hmm. um, and then there's a pretty good lunch menu they just added um, hamburgers and hot dogs because everybody was saying they wanted hamburgers and okay. hot dogs but um, they make a really good my favorite is the chicken cheese quesadilla um, crispy they make it really crispy so it's good um, I like the chicken salad um, I like the club sandwich but it's huge so you might want to split it with somebody okay. to get one of those but yeah there's a pretty good variety Great. there and then lots of different drink options That's as awesome. well yeah did you get a lot of I think PHS tried to close their lunch so I don't know are you getting students still from PHS um, we don't get students at lunchtime except for perhaps maybe once or twice. There might have been some students that accidentally <laughs> ended up there instead of at school <laughs> during the day. Yep. But we do get some school personnel that okay. stop by and we're hopeful that over time we'll get more um, parents and teachers on their way to work because right. a lot of people stop at different places mm -hmm. for coffee in the morning. So hopefully they'll make that part of their routine. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> So I know that you are active, um, and as I, with legislative issues and, and different things, trying to help educate legislators on, on things that can be beneficial to citizens in West Virginia. Do you have any legislative priorities coming up this year? So I'd like to mention on that note, and thank you for bringing that up, mm -hmm. that we, um, we are active. We were fortunate enough during COVID that we got some funding from the ARC of the United States, and we started a program called Legislative Matters Now with m and where Morgan Spicer and Melissa Southall, two self-advocates that are employed at the ARC, interview different legislators every month on topics that are important to them. So um, I'm excited that Employment First passed. I'm excited that um, there um, can no longer be discriminatory policies mm -hmm. against people with disabilities regarding health issues. Right. Um, but we kind of have the same things. You know, we right now are very concerned about uh, the amount of money of money that direct service care providers make because it's not very much money. Um, as you know, yeah. they can't keep people, enough people mm -hmm. in those positions and that becomes a health and safety matter for people with disabilities. So of course that's always something that we advocate for and are concerned about. Um, we also care about things like the marriage penalty um, and there was some talk that that would go away but I don't believe in the latest legislation that that's part of it. Um, and um, you know we work closely with people that call you know weekly really with issues like housing, education, um, employment concerns. So. Um, Yes, we are involved and we do care. I, I think I'm probably not remembering some things that are going on. Are there some issues that are at the forefront for you? The biggest issue for us, you actually had mentioned, and that's the wages for helping individuals with disabilities. That's um, Our workforce is not good um, and we, we do the best we can to take care of the individuals. I think the care we provide is excellent, but we're struggling. Um, we're 60 to 70 percent of our positions are vacant um, so our managers are working instead of managing um, so that means our training is down because right. of that so um, we did have an orientation this week where we had six new direct care workers and so that was very positive and it um, put a little pep in people's steps but we still need a lot more workers and 
wage rate seems to be the biggest barrier. Right, and from an administrative perspective, um, probably similar to yours, I can tell you that we've had to uh, reevaluate what we pay our staff. Um, once again, we're not direct care, but um, when staff can get a job at McDonald's or a fast food place, that makes a challenge, but when the funding doesn't keep up with the need, then that makes it a challenge too. We have um, our two largest grants at, at the ARC um, did not increase, but our expenses have yeah. gone mm -hmm. up significantly, and so it becomes a way that you have to be creative in mm -hmm. meeting needs. But obviously, you know, you have a heart for the people that we serve, and so it becomes a little frightening when Absolutely. you can't keep up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that's. It's probably our biggest challenge right now is our agency, and it sounds like it's probably yours as well. So for yeah. us, um, we just hear more about it through phone calls for mm -hmm. people looking for services or supports in the community, but that's part of what we do is provide those referrals and that information. Yeah. So what other challenges do you guys have right now? Um, you know, I guess probably that's the biggest challenge mm -hmm. is the financial piece of keeping up with the changing times. but. Um, we're fortunate that we have uh, a great core group of people and we're undergoing a strategic planning process now with Ed Rogers from, um, oh, I just forgot the name of his group. But anyway, they yeah. do a great job for new yeah. transformational strategies. And so um, today I feel really heartened that we're able to look at what we have mm -hmm. and um, work toward meeting our goals, even if we have to do it in a little bit of a different way. Um, but we have a great core. The second thing that would be difficult for us is meeting um, and interacting with all of the people throughout the state, state that we serve because some people are Zoomed out. And so um, we are planning on doing everything hybrid from now on. So luckily we have Doug Hess on staff that does all the technology stuff because that's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. um, so anything that we offer, we'll be able to offer in person, but also virtually so that, and that's, you know, mm -hmm. there was a positive that came out of COVID. Yes. And I think there are several, that's one of them that people are offering things that way. But that would be our only other challenge really. Okay. Yeah, the, um, we've done a lot with hybrid as well, right. um, and telehealth, and um, it's been interesting. Um, it, it did create some expense, you know, you got to set up all the equipment, but then it also creates a lot of benefits for individuals as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and I know, um, to toot your horn, since <laughs> I used to work there, you guys were in the forefront of the um, telehealth movement, so... Yeah. yeah, we have been doing it for a long time, yeah. but it has grown <laughs> even since then, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. So, so what are some of the biggest accomplishments you've had in the last year? Um, meeting people's needs where they are. So, um, you know, people couldn't gather in large groups, but we, our staff is, um, I guess the thing I'm most proud about our staff is that um, they develop great relationships with the people that we serve throughout the state and are able to maintain those relationships despite the barriers mm -hmm. presented by COVID. And also, um, we've increased our programming. Uh, Doug does a Friday Facebook Live show now. When COVID first started, um, we were doing it every day for several months where we provided information about resources in the community, about uh, mental health, uh, you know, we would do mindfulness. We had the wonderful Pamela Santer on mm -hmm. there and lots of different people because of the challenges presented by COVID. So being responsive and meeting the needs of people that we serve, I think we're most proud of. And then, you know, things like being able to start a daunting capital campaign and be this close to reaching our goal. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to use your staff like that. And, and we are, there's amazing people that work in this field. And there are. So we talked about the, the cafe and the thrift store. Is there other ways the community can help support the ARC? Yeah, so um, dropping off donations, mm -hmm. uh, supporting the cafe are two great ways. Uh, other ways are financial. You know, we have the capital campaign, as we mentioned, going mm -hmm. on. Um, and then we kind of, backed off on volunteers during COVID, but we're looking at implementing more. So 
uh, one of the things that we have going on now is during the summertime is the time that people donate uh, leftover items from yard sales and so we're kind of overwhelmed and so um, we could use help sorting and putting things away and that sort of thing. So we're looking at uh, bringing more volunteers and doing some training and then that's a great way that we could use some support and it would also allow people to have flexible schedules. Every year people volunteer with our secret Christmas program mm -hmm. which is coming up before you know it. Yeah, um, it really is. <laughs> the ARC provides uh, Christmas gifts for about 250 people each year that might not otherwise have Christmas. Many of the people that um, have developmental disabilities get just enough money to cover their right. living expenses and so um, we work with great organizations like yours and other uh, collaborating agencies mm -hmm. in the community to provide that but people volunteer to shop to wrap uh, all that kind of stuff so we'll be sending out information about that soon because people seem to really enjoy that yeah okay great um, and so I guess one last thing to talk about today um, some people know this, but not everybody knows that. But we're both presidents of Rotary yes. this next year. Um, you with the Wood County Rotary, and me with the Parkersburg Rotary. I'm just curious how how that your experience with Rotary has gone so far. Well, as you know, Rotary is a wonderful organization that's been around a long time that makes a difference in our community. I mean, to be able to say that you're part of an organization that. Um, almost eradicated polio and yeah. they're this close <laughs> you know that's that's an incredible thing but also as you know the service projects that you do it feels good to be able to give back and make a difference in your community and then the most important thing for me is I love our group um, ours is a little bit smaller but I you know I really enjoy the camaraderie and getting to know people and you know, on a business level, it's benefited me as well. I've made great connections in that way. Um, and then I just really enjoy the speaker. Already this year, we've had, um, well, we had Mark Williams just yesterday. And, you know, great things are happening mm -hmm. uh, at the Convention and Vis Visitors Bureau. Uh, one morning, we had um, the leads that are in the upcoming Cinderella play oh, sing and okay. I said that morning if we could do that every Thursday morning that would be great with me so you just learn so much you know I've lived here since 1984 but I still learn new things about the community and I think you've been here your whole life and I bet you still learn yep. new things as Absolutely. well. Absolutely it, it's really neat um, and I agree with you I mean the, the service first organization but also the um, relationships that you're able to build from it and I know that you guys are we're seeking um, some additions some new members so if anyone's interested in Rotary please see Liz or I and we'll be gladly to set you up um, you guys, where are you meeting now? So we meet at the Vienna Community Building, and okay. we meet on Thursday mornings at 7.30. So all of us early birds enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we meet at noon at the Blenner Hassett on Mondays um, for lunchtime. And um, we also have speakers every week. So it's, it's a great organization. So encourage anybody to sign up for Rotary. It's been a great experience for me. And it you sounds like for you as well. It has been, and I like that the Rotary groups in the area support each other and work together. That's a great thing, too. So yeah. for bigger projects, especially. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Liz Ford today. Um, we um, would appreciate if you did like the show to please like us. We are on not only YouTube, but on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Anchor. And um, subscribe so that you will get all the newest and greatest information. And if you are in a behavioral health crisis and need immediate assistance, um, we do have a crisis line. You may call anytime, 304-485-1725. Thank you. Thank you.